another episode of the Rebel Podcast coming to you from the Balcony of Freedom on this uh, Wednesday night. It's another miserable, pishy uh, evening here in downtown Melbourne. Um, spring my ass. Uh, my name's Prefontaine. I'm actually on the balcony uh, this evening on my Pat Malone uh, because uh, uh, my brother F- uh, Frank has got... Um, prior commitments and young Callum is studying for exams at the moment. So um, I sort of, uh, we tweeted this morning that we promised to get some special guests on the, um, on today's show to replace uh, Frank and Callum. We promised to get um, Pope Francis uh, and uh, Simon Le Bon from Duran Duran. Unfortunately, those two guests have fallen through. However, we also promised that we'd have our cousin Sean on, um, all the way from Scotland, and luckily uh, he has come through with a good. So, uh, cousin Sean, uh, long time no speak. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm um, I'm good. Well, we should all be good. That was a great result last night. Yeah, it was. Um, it now you're doing this podcast um, from the comfort of your own bed, by the sounds of it. I am indeed. <laughs> I had a bit of a late one last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That's um, so you should. It was a great. It was a great result for the boys. So let's um, let's get straight to it and um, have a chat about the match itself. Um, so, uh, did you go first of all? I did. Yes, I did. Uh, the atmosphere was amazing as as usual, and uh, I managed to make it in time for once. <laughs> Yeah, um, did you have a couple of beers beforehand, or you, were, were you behaved and got there early and stuff? No, I had a couple of beers. Uh, uh, I was, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm actually off work this week, so I was out, I was out pretty early, uh, and then we went first from dinner. And then we just walked up to the game, so we were going to get a taxi up to the game, but uh, the roads were chock a block, so we just, we just kind of walked and then around the, the last half just to make it in time. So. Did you make it in time for the Champions League um, anthem? I did. I made. I made it in just for the walk on. So I, I, I heard all. I heard all the good, the good dance and all that. So. Oh, good stuff. I um when I got up this morning because kick off was about quarter to six in the morning here in Melbourne, and I got up and I was sitting, just sort of setting up and ready to watch the game. But I thought oh, I need to take a piss, and I thought oh no, but the Champions League anthem's about to come out, and I don't want to. Be, I don't want to miss that. And I thought no, no, I'm gonna. I've got to go because as soon as that happens, then. Then the game's pretty much starting, and you know I'll never get another chance until half time, and I don't want to go through a Champions League match, you know, busting. So I ran into the toilet, and the toilet's not that far away from my lounge room. So I had the door open, and uh, I was taking a piss when the Champions League anthem came on, and it just dawned on me, you know, you don't actually need to look at the Champions League anthem uh, to really appreciate. Um, how moving and stirring that is because you could just need to listen to it because when as soon as the music starts and 60,000 Celtic supporters just start screaming off their tits um, even on even on the television uh, it's a pretty cool sound and uh, I know that you and I have been to a couple of games at Parkhead for Champions League nights when you hear it and it just sends a shiver up your spine do you ever find that it's that that novelty ever wears off or is every time you hear that anthem it's just you know amazing no, absolutely not. Um, I, I, you want to get there to hear to hear the anthem. You want to get there early enough so you so you hear it. And everyone does. Everyone see in the, in the queue to get in. Everyone's talking about how they want to get in just to hear the Champions League anthem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think every Celtic fan feels the exact same way about it. I mean, every Celtic fan just buzzes buzzes off hearing that at Celtic Park. Do you reckon that um, it's a unique thing that only happens? Um, maybe in a few places, but certainly only, maybe even as far as, maybe I can be a bit um, outrageous and say that only at Celtic Park that is that anthem as well received. I'd like to, and I'm just thinking, I've never really bothered to watch any other Champions League matches and at the start to see if the crowd goes off their tits about it. Do you think that it's a big thing in other for other teams or other sets of fans around Europe? I've yet to find one. I've yet to find one. Perfect cracking example is, is uh, just after after this, go into YouTube and type in Ar- Arsenal v Sunday <laughs> v whoever uh, as the teams come out, and you you hear the difference between the Emirates and Celtic Park when the Champions League tune plays, and you you, you realise that it's it's only Celtic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, certainly, any team at any away game I've ever been to, they've not uh, 
had the same reaction in any English team that I've seen in Champions League they've not had the same reaction either so I doubt, I doubt there's any other team that, that, that has that sort of reaction from those fans Why is that do you think? Probably just the fact they were, were, were so happy to be in the Champions League <laughs> they were just so happy to be there yeah. it's just because um, when, you, when you held it against Karagandi as well you just you just knew this is, this is what we want this is what we want we want in our three or four games of this so yeah so is it just like a, an immediate affirmation that we're in this where it's a reminder every time that we're actually playing in the most prestigious club tournament in, in football yeah I think I think that's what it is and it's also in anticipation of we'll get such a we'll get such a good home record as well I think you go into every match at home thinking there's a, there's, a, there's a distinct chance that we could walk away with three points here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and it certainly was pretty spine tingling <coughs> um, the uh, when they when the fans got up for the anthem tonight, even uh, this morning, even if I was taking a piss. Um, let's talk. Let, let's talk about um, even the echoes of urine in the toilet whilst the Champions League anthem is going, whilst sixty thousand fans are going nuts, is a great sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Um, let's talk about the team lineups. Um, the 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 team that Lennon put out with um, Foster and goals and uh, Lustig, Izzy, Mulgrew, Ambrose, and Van Dyke uh, are off the, you know, at the back, and then Forrest, Kyle, uh, and then sort of Stokesy, Pookie, and <laughs> Pookie. We haven't. You and I actually haven't had a chance to actually speak about Pookie. What kind of name is that? <laughs> I don't know. Is he, is he, is he from, is he Finnish? Yeah, I think so. Or Lap. Do you remember anyone? Lapland. Do you remember anyone having such a weird name when we were in Finland? No, no, I don't. But to be honest, how many, how many Finns did we actually talk to on, on that trip to Helsinki? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Hang on. Hang on. Finland. Uh, oh, yeah. No, there's Finland, isn't it? It's Helsinki in Finland. I forgot. Yeah, it is in Finland, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> all those Scandinavian countries, they're all the fucking same to me. We definitely weren't in Norway, and we definitely weren't in Sweden. Yeah, process elimination. We we were in Finland. Um, yeah, I don't I don't recall talking to too many Finns at all, let alone any Pookies. <laughs> but even when you say his name, you just want to laugh, don't you? It's the first name as well. It's, the, it's like both the names. I know. Timo. He, um, his parents were pricks. <laughs> they literally was playing a practical joke on a what, what's calling Pookie. This, his parents' surname wasn't even Pookie. It was like Smith or something. <laughs> Gary Smith, that was his dad. Yeah, Gary Smith, and they called it Tim Hill Pookie. <laughs> no, named after the dog. Um, and Sammy up front. Are you happy with the team that we that Lennon put out? I was quite, I was quite happy to see that they, they, they went for two up front, you know. Mm. Um, which just go, going out attacking instead of the usual Champions League. Well, the usual Champions League. Formation doesn't work, but usually, usually all one up front. So um, I was quite happy, to see, happy to see that. So um, the first half, how did you before the goal was scored? How, how were you feeling? What were you thinking? But I thought the whole, I, I thought the whole game were, were pretty good. Generally, um, obviously, once we get the first goal and obviously the second goal, obviously that was that was a good cushion. But I, I wasn't, I wasn't too phased with the fact that we, were, we, were, we went forty-four minutes or whatever. Without I go, I thought I thought we were doing pretty well up to that stage. Uh, uh, and I didn't think that. Um, yeah, did you? Were you ever nervous about? Um, were you ever nervous about Ajax at any stage in that first half? Because I wasn't. There was a couple of times there where they went close, but even then I was like, eh, I don't. For some reason I just wasn't as nervy as you normally are for these Champions League nights. No, no, I wasn't at all. I mean, they had they had their chances, but they didn't they didn't look like. They were, they were going to, you know, slaughter us, you know? Yeah. At one point, Rio Ferdinand tweeted, and it may have actually been in the second half after we'd scored both goals, but I can't really recall. But he tweeted, um, Celtic look very comfy in the Champions League. And that's true. It doesn't matter who we're playing these days. Um, this Neil Lennon version of Celtic in Champions League football, it, they look comfortable on the ball nowadays. Uh, they do, they do. Certainly they did last night. And... Um, they were, they, were, they were pretty decent against Barcelona, um, aye, but, and, and then Milan, Milan away as well. They were decent there. Obviously, they just were unlucky and go for them. But, but aye, we do. We look comfortable, in that, and I think hopefully we can we can at least sneak a Europa, a Europa League place out of this group. Yeah. Um, 
It was one of the ones you, you, you walked into. You walked into out the ground last night, and <laughs> we've only got three points. But uh, you had zero points two hours ago, and then three points, and now everyone's like, "Oh, we could do it. We're guaranteed last sixteen here. Like, we might even be able to top Barcelona." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? They've only got right. seven or nine or something. Um, so, how many points have they got? They got seven, haven't they? Uh, seven, eight, because they drew last night, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They drew one each. They got seven. Milan's got five. We're on three, and Ajax are on uh, on one. Um, but let's we'll talk a bit more about where to from here, maybe towards the end. Um, the first goal, um, I was um, <laughs> very funny. Um, I was um, I was watching it on ESPN three dot com, which is kind of like. Over here in Australia, you can the games are either going to be on uh, like a terrestrial television station, SBS, which is kind of like the ethnic channel, or it'll be on ESPN 1 or ESPN 2, and no, none of those three stations are carrying it, but ESPN 3 is like an online um, website where you can watch the games in high definition, but they're all on that channel. Um, so I just chucked it on that and airplayed it through Apple, <coughs> through Apple TV. Um, but about two, three or four minutes before Celtic got the penalty, it froze and it shut itself until basically just before half time. So I missed all of that. Um, oh. and, uh, I obviously saw the penalty in the end and I, I, I'll get your thoughts on that in a, in a moment. But what I didn't see was all the mucking around with the keeper and stuff, trying to sort of put James Forrest off. Can you tell us a bit about that? Oh, I, it was usual antics for any keeper. I'm sure they're, they're all at it. Um... It was just kind of. He, I don't actually. I don't actually remember what happened at the very start. I think he actually walked away from the goal, like as an over to one of the corner flags, the corner flag away from me. Right. Uh, and he just didn't appear at the goal. But while all that was happening, there was a, a kind of scuffle going on with Van Dyke and one of the Ajax players, um, at, like outside the box, uh-huh. and that that got a bit of attention and all. And then, and then while the referee was dealing with that. The key product suddenly appeared back at the goal mouth and suddenly wasn't happy with where Forrest had put the ball. And uh, to, be, to me, I couldn't really see where the, the penalty spot was, so it looked fine to me. But I mean, I, obviously, I'm, I'm not next, next to the penalty spot, so I couldn't really tell. But he was having, he was making a big fuss about that, and then and he wouldn't go to his goal. And then I think for this point, Van Dyke got a yellow card, and then I actually got a yellow card. Why did Van Dyke uh, get a yellow card? I, I, I don't really know because. I was too busy looking. I was too busy looking around what was going on, and then, and then before I knew it, their whatever scuffle was over, and the referee, the referee actually went over to speak to um, one of the, the pointless, the pointless guys behind the goal. Yeah. You know the fifth, the fifth referee or whatever. The corrupt, um, the, the corrupt ones that they're on the take from UEFA because they've caught, <laughs> they've caught Michelle Platini fucking a hooker or something. <laughs> That's the only reason I think they've ever got a job. Well, they actually did some last night, and they dished out Van Dyke with a yellow card. Uh, that is the biggest rot in sport. That sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth official, those dickheads <laughs> that stand behind the goals. I mean, really, they do nothing. I, uh, I, that's, that's the first time I've seen them doing it. Uh, so. uh, bullshit. Anyway, um, it was a really well taken penalty by um, Jamesy, who seems to be called Jamesy these days. I don't know when that happened, but. <laughs> After all that commotion, I would have shot it. <laughs> yeah. There's no way I would have scored that penalty, man. Oh, uh, and I was just watching him in the replays. He was so composed. He just sort of sat back there, looked at the referee, and went, all right, and then just top corner. I, I didn't think that's... I, I, thought, I, I thought after all that, I thought he's going to, he's going to sky here or the keeper will take him the, no, the ball. But, uh, I, and the keeper, he, he, the keeper went to the right side as well. He so. did. But he hit it that well that it didn't matter what he did. He was never going to get to it. It was a really good penalty. Really good penalty. And a good time to take it too, just before going into the sheds at half time. Yeah, well, I also, it was a 45 minutes to score the penalty in or Yeah, yeah. Now, it seemed at half time there was a bit of shit with the um, Ajax fans. Um, now, you're at that end of the ground, so you might have had a better idea of what was going on. Did you notice at all throughout the start of the match how they were behaving? Uh, well, they, were just, they just seemed a bit nuts, to be fair. In the stadium, at the, st- at the start, they just seemed like any sort of standard Europe- European team. Just their fans were quite vocal and, and they left a good hand gesture. But, but other than that, uh, it was nothing outrageously different about them and any other European team that would come to Parkhead. With, with a large support. They, to be fair, they had quite large support. Um, but no, they, were, they were a bit nuts. Uh, you, you know, we knew Craig. 
his yeah. sister, his sister got hit by a coin they left early. Oh, really? Uh, uh, he said, he says, mate, I'm, I'm leaving, man. I says, we, we're, we're, getting, we're getting hit by stuff here, and my sister just got hit by a coin, so... So, uh, oh, he, he, he was... He texted me before the game. He's like, "You're not going to believe where I'm sitting," because he he has to, he gets moved see where he sits uh, in the main stand. They, that, they keep that they keep his wee section for an, another section of Ajax fans. I, I don't understand why, but they, they, they put they put a wee section of Ajax fans where his season ticket is, yeah. so they have to move him every game. Uh, so he gets a different seat every game for every Champions League game. Mm. And he, he said last night he was sitting his seat was right next to the police line between the Ajax fans and the Celtic fans. In the main stand? Uh, no, in the, in the lesbian line stand. Oh, right. Oh, God. Yeah, so, so uh, he was pretty close to the action. I don't think I've ever seen as many away supporters at a Champions League game um, as last night. Is that, I mean... Well, I, only, only other thing you would get that is when that English team's playing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right there. Which, you know, that's only been one. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal got the same as well. I'm pretty sure. They played us. Oh, that's right in the um that uh, that qualifier. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah that was because they were and they were very loud at the start as well. I thought shit, these guys are going to be able to do a sing song here. But then I started seeing uh, chairs get thrown and all that kind of shit. And I thought, what's going on here? Uh, uh, I, I, I see when the, when the penalty gets went in or the second goal, I can't remember. They all sorts forward like as an onto the like onto the. The, the tarmac right between the pitch and, and, the, and the ground uh-huh. uh, and the police were, police were having a bit of a bit of a, uh, a bit of a hard task trying to get them all back, up, back into the ground or back up, up into the up into the seats uh, someone uh, someone tweeted uh, during the game that um, if you had come to Glasgow and discovered that drugs weren't for free and that all our hookers are as ugly as Glaswegian women are you'd be throwing chairs as well <laughs> <laughs> To be, fair, to be fair, they looked at they looked, <coughs> they looked a bit nuts. I was in, I was in town during the day. To, I was just had to pick up some stuff, and I seen a few of them getting arrested. Uh, like this was maybe two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> oh god! Uh, maybe they smoked a bad. Maybe they smoked a bad batch or something. <laughs> maybe. To be fair, a few of them looked like they could, they could give uh, us Glasgow guys a run for their money with drinking alcohol. Man, they were they were absolutely in their face. Dutch blokes, they're big. I know the Dutchies that came to Australia, like where I'm from, where I grew up, there was sort of, we grew up in the lush rolling hills of wild dog country, but at the bottom of those lush rolling hills is what we call the swamp, and all the Dutchies were brought out here to irrigate it, so to turn it into farmland, and these Dutchies are huge, like, you know, they they eat cows for breakfast kind of thing. And I'm just talking about, I'm just talking about the women. Like, they're big blokes. Um, so, yeah, I could understand that. And in fact, I think I was in... Japan for the World Cup, uh, and Holland were in the. I was in Kobe or something. In Holland, uh, the Dutch team were playing that night, and I was in an Irish pub, and all these Dutch fans rocked up, um, and they fucking destroyed the place, like in a nice way, not in an aggressive way. It was a happy, oh. it was a happy destruction, as opposed to an angry destruction. Um, but they fucking absolutely. I think they emptied that bar out. They were um, they were fair income, as we yeah. say. Well, Rimmer has it that last the night before the game. They were jumping about town, destroying some Celtic orientated bars. Oh right. Uh, uh, but to be fair, I don't know. I don't know how much truth in that rumour because there's a bar in town. You think you've been there before, Falcher, or, uh, or Falcher, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and the, I, I, I got a text from somebody saying, "Oh, the Ajax fans have absolutely wrecked it." But, but it must have been absolutely nonsense because the pub was open the next day when I walked past it the afternoon. You know what I mean? And it was fine. What what were we drinking that night that we drank in Vulture? It was um it was Guinness and something. Uh, there was two drinks that we drank in there. There was the the, the black and was it Blackbeard? They call them Blackbeards. Yeah, what's in that? Guinness and Coke and something else. Guinness, Coke, and I can't remember. I don't actually know what are in these things, man. I just I just I just them. And then the other ones are the. The car bombs, which are pretty standard. Oh yeah, the car bombs are standard. But that Guinness Coke and whatever it was, you got to find out what that was again. Because I actually enjoyed that, but I was too pissed to remember it, and I've been regretting it ever since. Because I've gone for drinks, and every now and then I'm getting sick of beer, and I'm thinking I want to change it up. I need to remember what that drink was. Yeah, I'll find out. It was Guinness Coke and something else. Right. I mean, it could have probably tasted like crap, but I'll, and maybe I was steaming. But 
Is that where we got really drunk in that pit? In that, um, anyway, it's a whole other story. Um, so let's talk about the second half um, goal from uh, Biram Kyle, who seems to be, I've noticed in the last couple of weeks, he gets a lot of shit from fans on Twitter. I don't know if what's the same in the, inside the stadium, but a lot of people um, lament the young Israeli midfielder. But I kind of like Biram. I think he's, I know he sort of runs around like a headless chook, but. The guy's been out of the side for a while. Like he's sort of been missing, and you got to give him some couple of weeks to play himself back in again. But I think he, I think he's all heart. Like that when he busted a lung to chase down whoever that ax yes. for, forward I... that was basically about to be one on one with a keeper, and he puts in this perfectly timed sliding tackle, and then gets up and turns to the camera. He doesn't realize he was on camera, but he turned to someone, either one of the defenders or to um, Big Fraser. And, just, and obviously his Glaswegian has improved dramatically over the last three seasons because he turns to him and says, fuck's sake. <laughs> right. I know, that was, a, that was a cracking challenge, man. That was uh, elite. I would have been one of the one with the keeper. He did, but we get back. I, I can't, I can't, we asked that. I, can't, I was like right on, right uh, facing their back, so I could really tell the distance whether the AX player was well in front of him or what. And, and how fast Kyle was going and how fast he was going. So I, I just waited for that lunge in and then I seen him, I seen him hit the ball away, which is, it, was, it, was, it looked impressive anyway. So. Well, he got away from him and he hauled him in, so it was a fair run. Like, it was f- fucking serious shit, you know? Yeah, I know, that was good. And he had, he had a good performance overall. But, uh, I mean, obviously the goal was a bit fluky, but... Uh, yeah, but you take uh, those, don't you? Aye, uh, of course. <laughs> Any day. Um, You're not going to go, oh, sorry, mate. No, we'll do that again. We'll play two. Did you see the the, the goal in the Bundesliga on the weekend? No. Nah. I can't. I can't remember who it was, but uh, so one of the one of the one of the teams we was playing. They, they scored the goal and it hit the side netting, but there was a hole in the side netting and it went in. And oh. they, 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 they get, get oh God! I think yeah. I saw something on the internet about that, but I didn't bother reading it because I wasn't in the mood. But um, right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, you know. Stranger things have happened. Um, well, wasn't there a game against Partick Thistle, P- Partick Thistle and Dundee or something in the um, the nineteen nineties or maybe even the nineteen eighties? And the net at the back on the ground wasn't sort of n- nailed down properly. And someone's had a shot. It's gone in, but it's gone through the back. And the referees um, awarded a, a goal kick, thinking it didn't go in. And everyone, <laughs> everyone on the park, even the. You know, like both sets of players are going, uh, that was a goal. And he's going, no, nah, I, I didn't see it going. <laughs> I don't know, I've not seen that before, but that would have been funny. He, and I think he would have got promoted to um, being uh, top, the chief of um, referees in Scotland at the end of that. I think his name was Hugh Dallas, I can't be too sure. Um, so the second goal, start to calm yourself. But I thought that just before they scored that, I remember, I think I was on the phone to Frank at the time, and which is a kind of a weird concept you think about it. Have you ever watched a game with a telephone to your head? I did it for at least a good 15 minutes this morning. And I was talking to Frank. And we weren't saying anything to each other. Like, because he, he was watching it in his place and I'm watching it in my place. And we're on the phone. No one's talking. But we're just, you know, clocking up the minutes. And every now and then you'll go, oh, fuck. Oh, come on. You know? Anyway, um, I can't remember where I was going with that. Oh, yeah. No, I can't remember where I was going with that. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. The goal. The goal. Um, um, just before then, Frank was going. Something's happened here. They're up for it. Like they they came out and they seemed a lot more organised. And I think they, I, I don't know if they changed. Frank sort of just suggested that they changed their shape. I'm not sure if that was the case, but they certainly were far more organised. And we we're under the cosh a bit. Um, and then we kind of sort of woke up to it and started to win back possession again. And then we built up, and then and then from that the goal came really. So it was kind of. If the, I don't think if, if we hadn't have scored, then I was wondering what kind of if momentum would have continued with Ajax, and then we would have been on the pump. But when that goal went in, it kind of that momentum they kind of got from it coming out of the change rooms kind of died, so to speak. Yeah, uh, um, <clears throat> I, I, I think that's when, when, when did we actually score? Was it the sixty-fifth minute or something? No, it was the fifty. Um, I got the stat. I got the stats here. I'm fucking organised, and I tell you. Um, it was, uh, I say I've got the stats now, the fucking, my bloody iPad died. Um, it was, it was in the 54th minute or something. 54th, I mean, um, I, I, 
they, were, they did come out a bit more organised, but I still, I still didn't feel as if at any point in the second half or the whole game that they, that they were going to grab a goal. Right. You know? they, had, they had a few chances. They had a few, they, the, the, the guy, the guy up front, the, 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 the black guy. I don't know who that was, but he 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 managed to cut through the defence at one point, and obviously Fraser Foster had an hour to save. Yeah. Um, and, and that was probably that was probably their best chance. They, they cut right through, cut right through the defence. They made it look dead easy, you know. And uh, well, Fraser Foster was up there to save it. Then they, they had a couple of other shots from distance, but but they were they were they were they were great. And obviously they're, they're playing against one of. The, there was two absolute pick em out point blank chances that Fraser just you know said no nah, not today not on my watch and you you know in any other keeper you're so used to keepers you don't expect them to be able to do that and every time a, a, a forward gets past that last defender and is one on one with him you need to remember this guy's really good and he's really hard to score against because he's He's, he's he's just so massive in in between the sticks. Yeah. Um, we're so lucky to you know have that bloke to, compared to some of the keepers we've had in the past. Um, um, now, um, let's um, let's have a listen to. I've got Neil Lennon's interview here. Let's have a bit of a listen to Neil and see what he's got to say for himself, and then we'll have a chat about that when it. Loads up. Neil, congratulations. Um, great win for you. Many defining moments in that game. I have to say, first of all, the, the calm um, James Forrest at the penalty kick was quite remarkable, was it not? Yeah, he keeps telling me he's never missed a penalty. So this morning we had a chat about it and he said, look, I'll step up and take it because obviously Chris was out. He kept us cool. I thought there was a lot of, you know, gamesmanship going on with the goalkeeper, but uh, kept us cool. It was a big moment, obviously, in the game just before half time. So, um, Set us up very nicely for the second half. Was was did you have any doubt about during the game? I mean, it was uh, you were under the a little bit in the first half, but once you get the goal, seemed to set. Yeah, I, I, in the final third, first half, I didn't think we kept it anywhere well near enough. Even though we were pressing them high and winning the ball in good areas, but we were just a little bit anxious at times. And you have to, you know, this is Champions League football. Ajax are an excellent side, and I did say going into the game that they would give us as many problems as Barcelona. And, and Milan, and that proved to be the case. But I think as the second half wore on, we we got better and better, and I thought we thoroughly deserved to win the game. You probably know it finished one-one in Milan tonight. Where does this leave you then? Well, it leaves us in a very good position. Um, we'll have to get a result in in Ajax if we can. That's going to be very difficult on tonight's evidence, but it's not beyond us. It gives us three points, only two points behind Milan now. So. Group's open again for us. It was a massive win in the context of of the group. What did you make of the opening half? I have no complaints. Yeah, he was late. Um, I'm not convinced there was contact, but he was. You know, he left a chilling leg high. Although if he'd have been playing on Saturday at Easter Road, he'd have probably got a booking for that. You got to give huge credit to the players here. This is our 19th game, a competitive game already. That's half a season. Um, Squad's really stretched. Um, players coming back from injury, players out with injury, uh, players suspended. So, I mean, it was heroic effort tonight. And hopefully we'll get a few more back for the game in Amsterdam and, you know, we go into the game confident. Well, one great save, you know, um, in particular from Serrero. Uh, just after half time, I thought we were just a little bit flat footed. Uh, Emilio did brilliant, you know, did enough to put, put him off and, and Fraser's made a great save. And they were defining moments in games and. That's why he's such a you know great commodity for the team. I thought Baram was worth his weight in goal tonight. I thought he was worth two goals tonight. He scored one and his you know his run to catch Fisher and make a tackle in the first half was huge for us as well. So he can be very proud of his performance. We're delighted with that and we're hoping that he, he kicks on. You know, he's been a little bit flat since his heavy injury. But that was more like him tonight. Um, I thought his Aguera was fantastic. Um, Samaras again. Forrest got better as the game went on, and um, you know the stalwarts in the team, Ambrose, Lustig, Van Dijk, Mulgrew, you know, they turned into great players at this club. Um, I knew the, the group was going to be tight, difficult. I was happy with the performances in the first two games, so it gave me a lot to, you know, be encouraging about going into these this double header against Ajax. Um, we've been in every game, and 
you know, that's no mean feat in a group of the calibre of the teams that we have in, against us. Um, and, and, you know, if we'd lost the game, Luke points after three games, we'd have been out and we'd have been chasing our tails, but we've given ourselves a great chance now. Rightio. A um, couple of things we want to pick up on uh, that. I don't know if you, did you hear that clearly, Sean? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, once someone, uh, any spare tickets, uh, uh, at any spare tickets, who's a, a guy on Twitter, tweeted this afternoon that Neil Lennon, out of nine Champions League, Champions League group games, has had four wins, and Walter Smith, always written here, Walter Myth, had 36 Champions League group games and only had six wins. Um, that's an amazing stat, and I, I haven't checked that myself, but if that's right... That's embarrassing that Walter Smith only had six wins out of 36 attempts in Champions League group games, and we've and Lennon's already knocked in four. I think the way Rangers play in the Champions League when, when, when they did play the Champions League, they were never, like, they were never as impressive as Celtic. I, I, all over Europe now, people think, when they look to Celtic, they think that Celtic are a good force in Europe at the group stages. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there's anyone out there that thinks they're going to win the Champions League, but I think people look to Celtic and go, or oh, hold on, Celtic have played at home, that's, a, that's almost a guaranteed win there. And yeah. They're guaranteed second place finish. Well, not guaranteed, but you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're pretty good for a second place finish these days. Yeah. Uh, the, last, the last four or five times we've been in the Champions League, we've, we've performed pretty well. Whereas I don't ever remember watching the TV when there's the Champions League and, and scoring one, beating Man U 1 0 and. Beating AC Milan 2 1 and all that. They, 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 they never ever got big results at Celtic. No, they didn't. Or they did never like, they were getting beat off. Who are they? Who are they? And yeah, there's teams from Lapland and stuff. And they always t- tended to, and I don't talk about that a lot much in this podcast, but they always just tended to really not play with anyone up front. Like, sometimes they'd play with no one up front and just have, you know, six across the midfield or something. Hey, how are you supposed, supposed to win football matches without, without any kind of, you know, forward? <laughs> you managed to get to the UEFA Cup final playing like that. Oh, I know. That was disgusting. That was, that was, that was a sad day for football. Um, that was a Nuremberg, and that game was like a Nuremberg rally from the 1930s with all those Nazis from uh, Ru- Russia as well. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, anyway, back to the teams. Let's talk about who were your, who were your favourites. Oh, sorry, who were your, um, who were your, your best on grounds um, out, of the, out of the side? Van, Van Dijk. I thought Van Dijk was good. Uh, I think, I think somebody said that the, the Dutch manager was there last night, so I think he, he wanted to put in a performance, maybe get a wee call up. So yeah, uh, he's come a long way. Good. He's come a long way since his very first performance against um, uh, Shakhtar um, Borat in um, that game in um, Kazakhstan because that was a nightmare. Remember, everyone was going, "Oh, this guy can never play again." He was hopeless. <laughs> Uh, so, was that his very first game, eh? I think it was his very first full game um, in uh, certainly in Europe. And it was a nightmare. Aye, it was a nightmare. But he has, you're right, he's asking a long way. And I thought last night he was fantastic. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, and even and um, Frank, who's always getting stuck into um, Effie Ambrose, and even admitted that Ambrose played quite well last night as well. <laughs> No, it was decent. The chance, the, one of the chances that they had was, I think, I'm pretty sure it was basically Ambrose's fault how they managed to get right through one on one with Foster. But yeah, but uh, generally it was all right. Um, who else did you like? Samras was good. Uh, how about how about Sammy's comments in the in the media before the game, um, in that press conference the day before when he was saying? Uh, I, I, I do remember reading this on Twitter. Um, he said, he, he, he said, you know, I, you know, I'm enjoying my time here. This is, uh, you know, obviously I miss my family and friends back home in Greece. It's been, you know, X amount of years since I've actually lived back in Greece, but this is my home away from home. I love it here. Um, I've got heaps of medals and I, and I love the European nights. Why would I want to go play anywhere else? I could, yeah, sure. I could go down to England and finish and you know, play for a team that finishes 15th, 15th, 16th. Um, and get paid, but all you got at the end of it is lots of money. I don't need any more money. <laughs> all right. I, I, that, that was that was the bit that I liked because Celtic Celtic tweeted this all this interview, and that's the bit that I liked. He was talking about going down to play in England for a 12, 
finish for a team that finishes 12 or 15 for some and all you get is money that's not what I want I thought that was a belt up yeah that was a rip up he kind of shows you that Sammy as we, as we knew it all say Sammy, Sammy gets it yeah you know? that's exactly right that is the word isn't it that is the sentence Sammy gets it I think it does I mean, we, we, we you and everyone listening to this podcast gets it and Sammy also gets it <laughs> that's right you know, you know, um I also thought Izzy had a, Izzy had a good game as well. I did, I did. I, he was, he, he, he did look pretty good actually. Um, and as you're right, yeah, and as you said, standouts like um, Charlie Mulgrew. Just watching Charlie, I, at one stage there, I actually just paid attention to what Charlie was doing. I didn't really watch much of the actual where the ball was. I was watching Charlie. His positioning, when sort of sitting back in, in that defensive midfield role, is fucking outstanding. Like he just. It's like as if he's a Sven Gali, he knows where the ball's going to go because he just, at that right opportune time, he just sort of intercepts that pass um, and gets in the right position. And it's only like like three seconds before that player plays the ball, he just moves into the area and then bangs at the ball again. He's just fucking good. And he takes a mean nude photo and puts it up on Twitter as well. <laughs> I can't believe he put that full up that sentence, man. He's got a huge cock, apparently. That's the oh, word on the street. He's got a massive cock. Uh, and and the way I had a 14 year old girlfriend at all. <laughs> That's right. Well, he knows where his breath buttered. Um, now, interesting to note that. Um, but are we finished on the team? Is anyone else you want to sort of give plaudits to? Forrest. What about Forrest? First game oh, back. Uh, first proper game back. Forrest was good. Forrest was good. I, the, I thought they, were, they, all, they all had an outstanding performance last night. I thought Foster was good. Foster got a good saves. And I, I just remember looking at Van Dyke a couple of times and thinking this, this guy was playing good. Uh, I don't remember thinking to myself, everyone, anyone was playing, you know, somebody, there was some, somebody in the part that was playing crap, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the guy, the guy, the, the Beer Beton came on, right? And he, every other time he's came on, he's came on for about 35 seconds. Yeah. You know I mean? He'd literally had the place. And I think he came on maybe 20 minutes to, 20 minutes to go. So he, he got, he got, a bit, a bit more of a run out than what he usually does, but uh, and yeah, yeah, actually, it looked, it looked alright, it looked, it looked fine. But I was because because he's only played about thirty five seconds every game. I, I, I never really had the chance to see him, so I wasn't really convinced. You know? Yeah. Um, well, they had to bring him on anyway because when they took off, um, when they took off Beer and Kyle, um, they have to Celtic. Um, um, under international law, has to fulfil a um, Israel quota um, for each game they play. So Bitton had to come on to fulfil their Israeli quota. Um, but little did I know that the referee was an anti-Semite. I mean, I, I don't reckon that was a red. I mean, yeah, definitely it was a it was a really orangey looking yellow card. I don't think it was a full. I don't think it was a full red though. I mean, it, was, it literally been up for twenty seconds. You can, I, I would have been the referee and said, "Dude, just calm down, all right? Just calm down." Everyone in the park knew, oh, that's a yellow. Yeah. I think even Beton knew it was a yellow. He yeah. was like, he put his hands up, he was like, hey, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then the red comes out, straight red at all. You know what I mean? Straight red. I know. Referees are such fuckwits. They're such fuckwits. Oh, yeah. um, speaking of fuckwits, um, Frank DeBoer or Ronald DeBoer, whichever one it was the ref was managing, um, he, um, he is one ugly motherfucker. Is that, that you've got? Have you not got to be an ugly motherfucker to be a hidden? <laughs> well, that's true. It is a that is a, a tautology. Um, but what's what's with the eyes? Like I never noticed it when he was a player, but I really noticed it on the sidelines. I was thinking, how can he see what's going on? His eyes are that far back in his head and crisscrossed that he wouldn't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> I, 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 I've not seen a picture of that. Like literally, so. I had to laugh at Harry. Harry, Harry, Harry Brady tweeted on Twitter, he said, the DeBoers always managed to have a mixed look of confused and angry. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, did, did you see after the game? Did you see what happened after the game? No. Nah. Apparently, he, 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 this is, this is a part, apparently he, he basically went over to the Ajax fans and essentially had a Q&A with them for, the, for about five, ten minutes. Really? Uh, um, I, I, it's just a pal, I've never seen it, and, and, and I, I can't really call it. I mean, I don't know if he does it every game, or, or it was just, uh, it was just a one-off, so I don't know. That's bizarre. I, I did see his um, post-match interview in which he said that 
he said that, you know, I've always just assumed that the better team wins football matches, um, but that wasn't the case tonight. Seriously? Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, your eyesight definitely is fucked up. You need to get those eyes straightened because I don't know what game you were watching, but um, I didn't think that was the case at all. Look, yeah, I thought Ajax played well in patches and... Oh, he was. His argument was that they had more chances, more clear-cut chances than um, than we did, and that we only had two and scored with both of them. Well, it's just what happens, isn't it? If you should take your chances, you win the games, don't you? I know, but what fucking planet does he live on, and where the fuck has he been over the last you know 120 years of football to think that that the best team always wins? I mean, he used to play for a football club that used to exist in Scotland. They used to win a lot of games, and they were rubbish. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, even go as far back as a couple of weeks ago when we played Milan in the San Siro, we played much better than Milan and walked away from that with nothing. So, you know, fucking get over it. <laughs> I didn't hear his interviews, but that's... Uh, I, I noticed that he, I did hear his interview before the game, or the, the, the day before the game. He couldn't, he couldn't bum up Celtic fans enough, man. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I was like, he's, a, he's, he's clearly... A, Worried about the reception he's going to get, so I'll just say something nice about Saudi fans. <laughs> well, did he get a nice reception, or did he get booed every time he sort of came out into the touch zone? <laughs> no, 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 he didn't. He didn't get a nice or a bad reception. He didn't get any reception. I think a couple of times he sang that uh, one called Ronald, one called Frank song. A couple of times, but before the game, I could, have, if I had to guess, I would have said that's all we've been singing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, nah, he didn't get any sort of reception to be fair. And this is another... Um, I've got a whole b- bunch of questions that I wanted to ask from the game. Um, and one of them was, um, obviously, what's with Frank De De was De Beer's friggin' eyes and what was with the Ajax fans carrying on? The other one was, what was with the possession, the possession count? Like, if you watch it on the Champions League, the UEFA possession, possession count at the end of the game, they said, I think they had Celtic at like 38% possession for the game. The BBC had f- sort of uh, 39, I think. I think Sky had it at 41. Um, that, the Guardian had it at 45. Uh, the Herald had it at 46. Like, who the hell's counting when who's keeping the ball? Like, how can you have such varied different uh, final results on the possession between the two teams? And I would have... No way I would have even thought that it would have been as disparaging as 38% to Celtic. I would have said it was. It felt more like 50-50 to me. There was plenty of times we had the ball. It wasn't like as if we were playing Barcelona and they were playing that tippy-tappy and we couldn't get the ball back. That was weird. What is with that? What's the deal? Are these people making this shit up? I could not tell you. I don't know who sets on this. Somebody, gets, somebody must get paid for that. That's amazing. Maybe someone starts doing it during the um, warm-ups. And maybe, <sighs> maybe one of the teams has got more balls than the other. And he's going, I can't keep up counting all this sort of stuff. Uh, I was rounded up to the nearest 10. <laughs> I don't know. But what, what I found out last night is, uh, I, I, I don't even know if you, you'll be able to get this as a map, but uh, the Celtic Wi-Fi started working last night. Oh, so I yeah. I, um, I saw that they've got some, there was an email I got or something or something on Facebook that they've got some new live app or something. What's the deal with that? Uh, what it... I don't know. I don't, I, when I went in, to the game last night and signed up for the Wi-Fi, it automatically sent me to the app store and said, look, download this app because this goes with the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So I, I, I downloaded it, but I didn't go on it because I'm too busy watching the game, but I think it's basically for stats and all that during the game and giving you live commentary and all that during the game. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's just called Celtic Live, so, but I could not tell you what it was like because I've not, not used it yet. So. I'm always reluctant to download those things because I don't want things that's going to automatically tell me the score if I'm watching... Look, if I'm not going to watch the game until the next day or something. Yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff. You can just turn off the push notifications. Ah, good point there, Sean. Good point. That's why you're Generation Y and I'm not, you know, this sort of stuff. So um, where to from here? We need to, we obviously need to get a win in Amsterdam. Are you going? Um, Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. That's going to be my my last Celtic game before I leave. Yeah, that's right. How are you going to survive moving to the Middle East and you know joining a, joining an Al Qaeda um, terrorist cell? That's um, pretty, you know, that's hardcore stuff. Well, these uh, these uh, jihadists are uh, pretty big on their Celtic, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't aware. But um, do do go on. They don't, they don't, they don't like the crown either. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so, so, so the actual game in Amsterdam Arena is going to be your final Celtic match before you um, head away from Bonnie Scotland. Literally the final one, yep. Now, was that game last night your, your last game at Celtic Park? No, uh, it's done the United. We played a, f- a few weeks. It was my, my last Champions League game, so it did feel like it was a last something. Right. The last Champions League home game, so... But you'll be uh, you'll be back every second week anyway, because you seem to t- tend to take holidays every twenty minutes. Yeah, uh, indeed, that's exactly what that, that's my plan. I'll come back when, the, when, when we play the big games like against Ross County and all that. I'll fly back for it. So. You'll be flying back in the lead yet? Uh, I probably will. Uh, I think because uh, I think Al Qaeda they've got their own lead jet service that just gets their you know their main guys, their main terrorist guys around town. Because every time they used to fly those planes, they crash them. Um, so when uh, so we've got Ajax in Amsterdam, we really need to win that game. And then is it? Do we have? Is it Milan after that, and then Barcelona at the end, or is it the other way around? I don't know. I think it's Milan then Barcelona. Milan at home and then Barcelona away. I think whatever happens, whatever we're aiming for, if it's Europa League or last sixteen, I think it needs to be done and dusted by the time we play. Barcelona away, we can't be going to Barcelona and needing points. But I got a funny th- if you th- work this out, if you think it through, okay, just say we beat Ajax um, in, in I mean, a. F- if we beat Ajax, does that guarantee us Europa League because six points against one team? No. Yeah, I think so. Let's just say it does. Um, <laughs> so we beat Ajax. That puts we beat Ajax right, and Barcelona beat Milan in the next um, match day. So that puts. Yeah. That puts Barcelona on 10 points. That's them through. It leaves Milan stranded on five, and it puts us on six. So we move to second, and Ajax stay at one. So that would defi- I think that would definitely put us through to the, um, the Europa League. Yeah. Um, then we play Milan. Now, if we, so if we beat Milan... Oh, I, I, no, you're right. If we beat Milan, we'd go from six to nine, and Milan would still be on five... And even if they beat Barcelona, they would only put them on eight. And, yeah, okay. Yeah, we need to beat Milan. Yeah, after the last 16, I mean, I mean, you beat Milan. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if we win the next two games, we're through. That's pretty straight. Next two games, then. And then, that means you don't have to worry about the last game. You don't want to go to Barcelona and you can points one. Oh, shit, shit, no. Um, and if we were through, I'd send the kids. Uh, Just play the kids. They bit, they bit, uh, they bit Ajax four one yesterday. Um, yeah, I saw that. That was a good result. And their goals are on goals, well, so. Just keep bringing those kids through. That's what we want to see. Um, so, right, and then you're away. That's kind of that's full on. You're going to come, make, keep on doing the trip right across, and just come to Australia for a couple of weeks. <sighs> Might as well. Might as well. I'm going to have to. I'm going to. I'm going to have to get all the. Below down and what it's like to be a Celtic fan, not in Scotland. Yeah, what's the time difference? That's the killer. Uh, That's the killer. It's, it's not actually that bad. It's, right now it's only two hours, uh, and then when it goes, when the clocks change at the end of the month, it will go to three hours. Oh, that's nothing. Uh, uh, exactly. The only time it's bad is for Champions League nights. So in the winter, it'll end up a seven forty-five kickoff becomes uh, eleven forty-five or ten forty-five somewhere uh, at uh, night. At night, so it means you're up late if you're up next day, so... Oh, yeah. oh fucking diddums. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need my sleep, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, you get plenty of sleep, don't worry about that. Um, Jimmy's Town's a hard game, man. It's a tough game. You, you need your rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, any other... What's, before we wrap up, any other final thoughts? Um, any other news? What's going on? Who have we got this weekend in the in the league? Partick, oh, it's Partick, so that Glasgow Derby's back on. That's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, is that yeah. is that is that Celtic Park? No, it's a uh, Firhill. Is it Firhill? So are you not going to that? I'm not. No, I couldn't get a ticket. So just go and scout yeah. one. I'm telling you, us, you know, us yellow odds. We get into any of that kind of shit. It's easy. The other issue here is, is right now I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a, a semi-alcoholic man, so I basically. <laughs> I'll probably be lying in my bed and I'll and I'll just grab the iPad to three minutes before kick off and go right watching it. I'll just put my pillow up. That's how I do it these days, man. I think there's a name for that. It's a, called part time supporter. I've seen that that's been labelled at your at your feet before, so you're gonna have to try and prove prove them wrong. 
So I'll tell you that guy that's at ninety percent of the games and misses a few. And then goes to all the European away games on that, that part time supporter. <laughs> right, okay then. We'll have to have a. Um, th- those people that accuse you of being a part time supporter will have to have some sort of uh, debate. Those, pe- those people that accuse you of being a part time supporter don't have anything else on me and they just make stuff up. They absolutely make stuff up. They do make stuff up and then they, they have the goal to go to move to cities like Edinburgh. What's with that? <laughs> That's perfect. It's because they're posh. That's why. Anyway, enough about them. Um, uh, what about the Huns? Let's have a quick laugh about the Huns. I, I don't even bother following them anymore. Like, I really don't know what's going on um, in terms of this whole stuff with uh, the board. And is it someone's trying to? Ta- is it Daryl King or someone's trying to come back or and take over the board? And I don't. Know. I, 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 don't I don't really know. I don't. I keep. I don't really keep an eye on it. Either, I could not tell you what's happening. All I know is that anyone who's linked with anything about the Angels has generally got a crooked past and they're up to all the dodges. And I could not tell you anything. I mean, what, Dave King was part of the old regime with David Murray and all that. I know. What's with that? So why, why, why is Dave King now suddenly one of the greatest guys that's ever lived? Was he the South African bloke? Uh, yeah. And now he's all his old tax thing. Get the point. Get the porn star back in on it. He was good. I liked him. At least he was entertaining. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I really couldn't tell you. Asking me that question about Rangers is like, it's like asking, like, I don't know. It's just, I really couldn't, I could not tell you anything about it. I don't know what's happening. I just know that every now and then someone appears in the paper and then you go, all right, there's another story. That must be funny. And you move on. Somebody said they nearly lost the other weeks, like they were playing Sunday and they were 2-0 down or something like that. And I, I couldn't even tell you their scores or who they're playing at then. Oh, no, it's actually a, it's a kind of good world to be in, isn't it? That you sort of just don't give a shit anymore. It's good. We're in the second division now, second division, so. Yeah. No. Well, what, what I want to happen is. Well, it doesn't really matter, but what I want to happen is the uh, cars get relegated this year. So they're, they're both playing in the first division. <laughs> Oh, sorry, the remodeled championship, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a lot of and if that, that's not a bad idea, Sean, because if they did go down, it would mean another comp- a decently competitive team in the first division or whatever it's called these days. And yeah. I reckon, because my theory was, my theory all along was that, 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 that Sevco would um, win the third division, win the second division, and then get stuck in the first division for a season or two. Um, yeah. And if Hearts dropped down... That would have really fucked them up because I think that no matter how bad things are going for Hearts, Hearts would would be a better side than Sevco um, at that point. That 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 may be the case, and it probably is the case, and it probably will be the case if they get relegated. But um, luckily for, for for Rangers and, and Hearts and, and whatever else, the old pal of the SFA's stepped in here without or whoever the hell was calling the shots down in the old championship uh, because apparently for next year there's no playoffs into the Premier League uh. so so they've, they've designed it in the, as far as I see it they've designed it so that if Hearts do go down and Hearts do appear to be better than, than, than uh, Sefco the both teams will finish first and second anyway and the, there's a distinct chance that both teams will get, they will get promoted do you know what I mean because one of them would win, then win the, the playoff against the third the spot Oh, that's pathetic. That's just so. They're, 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 I can't work out who's more corrupt, the SFA or your wafer. But between the two of them, they just they just make it up as they go along. Oh, that's the SFA, it's got, it's the SFA man. The SFA. Yeah. yeah. I can understand why you're leaving that country. Um, Rodeo. Well, cousin Sean, it's uh, been great having you on the podcast. Uh, it's been a while, actually, to come think of it. I don't think we've done one this season with uh, your good self. So thanks for taking the time out and um, interrupting your beauty sleep to have a bit of a chat with us on the balcony, of freedom. Yeah, no, no, it's no problem. And uh, we're um, we'll have to we'll have to get together and have another chat to, um, uh, pretty soon, maybe before you head off to um, to your uh, next adventure in the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right, fantastic. Uh, be well. Uh, enjoy your Amsterdam. Be safe, and uh, we'll um, we'll talk to you soon. Right, okay, excellent. Cheers. I'll right. See, you, see you later. All right, cheers.
Bye. And uh, radio, there you go. That was Sean. So don't forget, you can um, subscribe to the uh, Rebel Podcast by going to uh, the Howl Media website, which is Um And uh, we're, our next show will be uh, the night after the uh, after the uh, the return league against Ajax, and in which uh, Frank and Callum will be back on again. You can follow us on Twitter, which is at Rebel Podcast, R-H-E-B-E-L-P-H-O-D-C-A-S-T, I think it is. Um, and uh, until then, um, look after yourselves, how how, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Yeah.